Now we're gonna dive deeper into the Continuous Quality Improvement Plan or CQI plan from Massachusetts Quality Rating Improvement System, QIS. The CQI plan is your tool to capture and summarize the information you've already learned about your program from the assessment and evaluation tools and then make improvements that will benefit your program, children, the families, and your staff. In order to fill out the CQI plan, you'll take information from the various evaluation tools that you've filled out. These evaluation tools will vary depending on the age of the people that you serve in your program. For a full list, you can visit EEC's website um, to get an up-to-date list from the QIS toolbox. Um, it can be a different ERS, so SACRS, ECRS, FECRS, um, PASS, BAS, Strengthening Families for all programs, the ARNET or CLASS, APT. It really just depends on the ages you serve in your program. You can, of course, look at continuous quality improvement through the lenses other than the required assessment tools, and we'll discuss that more later. So let's look at an actual image of the CQI plan. You can download it, um, the EEC provides it, the tool, in just a Word document. It's very simple, just a simple table, um, not that it's simple to fill out by any means. CQI plan is broken down into different focus areas listed on the document. So the document will include all the ERS subscales, which will look different depending on the ERS that you filled out, SACRS, ECRS, or FECRS. Uh, for the SACRS for school age, it will be space and furnishings, health and safety activities, interactions, program structure, staff development, and special needs supplementary items. After the ERS, you have QIS required documentation, workforce qualifications, and professional development. Family survey and staff survey, the class or our net, depending on your age group. Strengthening families, and then for school age, there's the APT-O and APT-Q. Um, the template's fairly straightforward, like I said, with the um, different boxes. Each section will ask for a score if it's in an assessment or evaluations tool. And then it will ask for areas of strength. So um, because we're always looking to our strengths to support us in overcoming our barriers. Our barriers. And then areas for improvement. Um, next, we'll ask us for action steps for how we're going to um, make some progress in those areas for improvement. And then space for reflection. Um, the final area for reflection is done after the action steps have been completed. So a question I get asked a lot is, do I need to have these reflection steps or this reflection boxes filled out when I'm submitting for QRIS? And the answer is no. That is done once you've done the action steps. These are more guidelines to um, facilitate you in reflecting. How have we done as we've completed our action steps? Have we made progress in these goals that we've set for ourselves? So a couple questions people have sometimes on the different sections. Um, the required documents uh, those are, for QIS, there are some required documents that you need to submit for each level. And we'll go through some of these more specifically later. But um, just a quick overview. So um, for each level, you have to submit different required documents. So for example, for school age, level two, you must submit a list of community events that you've attended in the past 12 months. And so one, that might be your strength. So you could list that as one of your strengths. An area for growth might be that you had to scramble to put those together. So um, an area for growth might be that you will keep better track of um, those events. So we'd write a strong action step, give you a little preview, would be something along the lines of a summary of um, community event will be written up within a week of attending by the director who attended um, and submitted to executive director for approval um, starting spring 2017. Um, workforce qualifications is um, looking at professional development requirements for QIS. Um, it's also looking at degrees, CDAs, anything like that. Um, and the blank areas are actually some of my favorite parts of the CQI plan. Um, sounds silly, 
but they're fantastic because while it can be easy to be bogged down in the requirements for QRIS and thinking about, um, all right, well, Sacker says that we need to improve on this, so we're improving on this, and oh, we didn't do great on this part of the app, so we need to worry about this. Those blank spaces really let you think about something that you see as a need in your program because you know your program best. You know what you need to work on, or you might see an area that needs to improve upon, and maybe Sackers just didn't see it. Um, one example might be that um, Sackers might not address that uh, the girls in your program um, are shying away from participating in fitness programs. They um, don't participate in gym programs. You see that the boys step forward and the girls kind of shy away. So you want the girls to participate in the gym. And um, so you are working towards creating some time for the girls to step up and take more of a leadership role. And you've decided that that first step is going to be allowing them to have time in the gym just themselves. Um, to really gain that confidence. Put that in your CQI plan in that blank space. By December 2017, we will have one um, rotation a week where it will be Girls Only Fitness in the Gym run by Director Allison. It's a great spot for you to really put maybe a pet project or something that you see as a real need for your program in there. So before we move on to some real specifics in the CQI plan and really look at how to build one with strong action steps to really create that culture of continuous quality improvement and make sure that you are making a plan that really um, helps you move your program forward, I want you to really take the time to look at your program's continuous quality improvement plan um, and really see how it's formatted right now. Um, if you don't have one, quite yet? That's all right. Download some of the templates that we have in the course room and just see some of the examples that we have. Uh, take some time to look over it, um, get an idea of what's out there, and then come on back to the next video.